I have always had a very deep respect for native spirituality, and in all of my learning about different traditions and important figures, I never thought I could ever come into contact with a piece of it. I didn't even think that it was a possibility that these animals were shapeshifters of any sort until I recently was telling my brother about it, and he told me that it might be. I grew up in the central mountains of Idaho, in between several big mining towns from the late 1800s, and living here for most of my life I know what the wildlife looks like, and I know what I would see in which time of the year, except for a few encounters that I still can't explain. I was out early with my dad and my grandpa to go and find a scrap pile to get some firewood from. It was about seven or eight in the morning, and we were on a tiny dirt path, miles away from any houses, and as we were driving, we turned a corner to see an animal sitting in the middle of the road. I would say that it was about the size of a large dog, but hunched close to the ground, and completely black. It had a long tail that dragged on the ground, and when we pulled up it turned to look at us, and had a small head with either small ears or no ears. I couldn't see anything specific. After it saw us, it hopped off the trail into the bushes on the side of the road. Believe me when I tell you this, I have never in my life seen an animal that looked like this. We were all confused. One other time, I was out riding my ATV at around sunset. I was by myself on some trails that I knew well. I decided to explore a bit and took a different path, and suddenly it started to go up a steep hill with lots of washout. As I stopped to try and turn around, the scariest looking bird I had ever seen run in front of me across the trail. There are a lot of wild chickens, turkeys, etc. around here, but this was about the size of a chicken. But it almost appeared as if the body was backwards, or if it was standing straight up, looking very skinny and just not like a bird. I could not see any visible wings, but it had a longer neck, and its head was bear-like like a turkey, or a vulture's might. I finished turning around and sped the fuck back home. I don't know much of the native tribes that would have inhabited this area before the gold rush, but I do know that a lot of violence and death happened because of it. With the historical cemetery having over a hundred unmarked graves, if anyone might be able to confirm or deny my theory, I would really appreciate it. My name is Eli and I'm 22 years old now, and I always loved being outdoors and in the woods. I remember about nine years ago when I was around 12 or 13, my family and I moved to Minnesota to help out my grandparents. They were getting up there in age and couldn't run the farm like they used to, and just for a change of scenery. A year or so after the move, my two brothers and I got into the habit of running around the edge of the woods along the backsides of the property and exploring where we probably shouldn't. After school one day, me and my brothers got our stuff and made a four or five hundred yard walk to the forest behind the house. My brothers decided to take off and run ahead about another three hundred yards ahead of me, play tackling and just being rambunctious teens, while I noticed a bundle of flowers that my grandmother would have loved. As I was looking at the flowers, I heard a bit of rustling in the woods about fifteen or twenty feet to my right. I didn't think too much about it, because you know... It's the woods. So I shook my head and went to grab the bunch of flowers to give to my grandmother. No sooner as I reached my hand out to grab them, I heard it. In my brother's voice, someone called my name for help. It sounded just like my little brother. Except, it was off a little bit. Like it was being played by a recording. I immediately froze, because as I looked up, I noticed my two brothers were a ways ahead of me playing in the snow. I remember calling for them to hurry up and come with me to the house, and as I turned to run up to the house, I noticed a lone coyote moving in between some old beat-up trucks that my grandfather had parked in a pasture on the edge of the woods. But this coyote was considerably larger than any one I have seen up until this point, and what struck me as odd was that this coyote looked like it got hit by a car, and I swear when it moved around the trucks, it looked like it had its paws on the side of the truck like it was trying to look over the truck at me. I couldn't help myself and yelled, Hey! to it, and we sat there for about a minute or less, just staring at each other, before I could turn and start back walking to my house. 
I watch this thing lean around the truck and say in my brother's voice again, Hey. When this happened, I yelled for my brothers and booked it to the porch of the house. As my brothers caught up to me, they noticed how pale I was and asked what was wrong. So I told them I seen a mountain lion, scared of being ridiculed for seeing something so ridiculously frightening. Later that night, I was looking around the internet and found some other encounters by people all over the United States having similar stories and came across an article about the skinwalkers, which was both terrifying and interesting. This isn't the only encounter I've had with such entities. I just wanted to get my story out there as a bit of a warning that there are things out there that don't really make sense to the human mind. The events in this encounter happened not too far inside the Ocala National Forest in central Florida. A skinwalker in Florida. Go figure, right? So the day started with a phone call from my brother, who was asking to take a hike in the National Forest outside of our town, and then to spend the night out there in hopes of doing a little fishing and roasting some marshmallows over a fire. It was me, my brother, and his girlfriend, who I see as my loving little sister, so it was going to just be a chill night. We left town and headed to the woods pretty early that day, around three in the afternoon. We had gotten to our spot in the woods after two hours of riding around, trying to find the perfect spot to set a tent. My brother, sister, and I decided to start the day with some fishing, so we grabbed our rods and a tackle box and headed for a little stream, about a quarter mile from our camping spot. As we came close to the stream, we noticed an awful smell, like rotten meat, when we came up to the river, we found the source of the smell, an abundance of dead fish all around the edge of the stream, and seeing the water had a nasty rust color tint to it. When we were done gagging at the sight and smell of what was in front of us, a huge sense of dread washed over with an uncomfortable feeling of being watched. My sister noticed and asked what was wrong, so I played it off with a joke and suggested we go make the fire and set up the tent. So I shrugged it off not wanting to frighten her. After another 30-minute hike from the stream back to the campground, my brother and sister started collecting wood for the fire while I started to set the tent up. I set the tent up around the same time they came back with enough wood to have a fire last a long while. So we got the fire lit, and I admit it was a damn good fire, and we decided to start roasting some marshmallows. Before I could eat any... I had to take a leak, so I told them I was going to step into the woods for a second to pee. I walked about 30 feet into the woods and started to relieve myself when I heard my sister say, Hello. Finding this extremely odd, I looked around and didn't see anyone or anything, so I went back to my business. And as I was zipping up my zipper, I heard her say again, Hey. Thinking they were pranking me. I rushed back to the campground to find them still roasting marshmallows over the fire. Kind of freaked out, I asked them if they were messing with me, to which they frowned and explained that they've been in the same spot since I went into the woods. Now terrified, they saw how ghost white I turned and asked me if everything is alright, so I told them what I heard, and they suggested we just go into the tent and go to bed early. So that's what we did. After already taking a while to fall asleep, I woke up in the middle of the night to underbrush crunching right outside our tent, and the horrible smell from earlier was back, worse than before. For fear of scaring the hell out of my brother and sister, I decided not to wake them up. As I sat there shaking and sweating, I noticed the sound of twigs snapping had stopped, and I began to hear what I could swear loud, raspy, and heavy breathing like something was trying to sniff out our tent. I quietly tried to lay back down and cover my ears so I couldn't hear the breathing anymore, and eventually I fell back to sleep. The next morning we woke up late, so we decided to start packing up our belongings and heading home. When we got out of the tent, the first thing we noticed was our cooler was tore up and thrown upside down against a tree with everything that was in it, it was strewn throughout the campsite. Another thing I noticed when I was rolling the tent up was a ton of footprints. Weird footprints that almost looked like normal, except for obvious claw marks above each toe. 
Once I spotted these, I hurried up putting the tent in my truck and got my brother and sister and myself out of there as quick as I safely could. As of yet, I haven't been back camping in any kind of woods, and I can't imagine coming across another one of these things.